Uh, I'm Matt with Aeromotive Fuel Systems and today we're here going to show you how to install your uh, triple pump assembly into your Nissan Patrol tank. Uh, this is a total drop-in assembly uh, that comes with all the items you see over here. The pump assembly itself which consists of the outlet cap and then three 450 liter an hour pumps below. We also have, this is our patented Phantom foam and bladder or sump assembly that acts as your new in-tank sump to keep the fuel placed around the pumps uh, during cornering or acceleration, deceleration, any uh, rapid movements of the vehicle. Um, other items that are included as well, this is a sending unit bracket that we'll be attaching the factory sending unit to to reinstall into the tank. We've got six M5 screws here to hold the outlet cap in place as well as one M4 screw and nut and washer assembly to hold the sending unit in place onto the sending unit bracket. We also have two small pigtail wires here. These wires will attach to the factory sending unit to give us some extra length to attach to the two white wires on the outlet cap of the pump assembly uh, that allows you to retain the uh, function of the stock sending unit. So, uh, Other tools that will be involved with installation, um, just a Phillips head screwdriver, a set of Allen wrenches, mainly just the M4 wrench itself, and then also a pair of wire cutters, a pair of wire strippers and crimpers, and then a flashlight as well. So those are the items that are involved um, with the installation. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we need to remove the factory sending unit and pump assembly from the tank. This is a factory Nissan patrol tank. So first thing we're going to do is take and remove the five screws with the Phillips screwdriver that retain this in the tank. Next we're going to take out the factory sending unit. Carefully pull it out. Careful not to damage the float arm as you take it out because we will be reusing this. Also this at this time go ahead and remove the factory gasket. During reinstallation you will need to get a new factory o-ring to put on here. That is not included with the kit so you will need to source one of these to reinstall it. So we'll set this aside. For demonstration purposes we will reuse this one for reassembly. Okay now that we have our sending unit, factory sending unit out of the tank we're actually going to remove the sensor and float arm assembly from the factory sending unit itself. To do that there's just one single M4 screw right here that you can remove with a Phillips head screwdriver. So we'll remove that. Now, set that aside. I've already cut the two wires that come off of the factory sending unit. These two wires are connected up here. It'd be the black and the white wire. You'll actually cut those two wires off to allow you to totally remove the float assembly and sensor from the factory sending unit. So once we have this removed from the sending unit, we're actually done with this, we can set this aside. All right. Now that we have removed the factory sending unit from the, um, or the float and sensor assembly, we need to take and strip a portion of this wire off here so we can reattach it to our pigtail wires here. So go ahead and I can strip just a small portion off the wire. We're kind of about that much. That's all we need. So now, included with your kit are two wiring pigtails. We have a white and a black. So we'll take the white wire that corresponds to this, insert the wire into the connector, and using the correct crimping portion of your tool. Go ahead and crimp that wire into the butt connector. Make sure you've got a good connection. These are to allow some extra length of wire to when we go to install it into the tank that we've got enough to connect it to our uh, outlet cap before we push the outlet cap and the pump assembly into the tank. So now we need to attach our float arm and sensor assembly to the provided sending unit bracket. 
Now on the back of the bracket we've got there's a little retainer clip here that sticks out. What you want to do with that is actually insert that into the slot and then it will actually slide up onto the bracket there until this hole lines up with the slot on the on the sensor. And then from that point we'll take our provided M4 screw and nut assembly and we'll go ahead and insert insert the screw into a small hole. It is a fairly tight fit so you can you have to thread this in there with the uh, screwdriver. Just thread that in there. And to lock it in place, we'll install first the washer, lock washer, and nut. And get the nut finger tight on there, and then go ahead and tighten it up with the screwdriver. All right. So this is what the new float arm assembly should look like before we get ready to install it into the tank. So for the next part of the installation, we're going to install the sending unit bracket and uh, float arm assembly that we just um, put together outside of the tank. Now inside of the tank, you can see there's two little uh, tabs that stick off what would be the factory sump where the factory fuel pump would sit in. Um, it would be the two little tabs right down here on the edge. So what those do, those two little tabs are going to allow us to retain these little slots right here. So with this middle little arm, you're going to bend this thing back just slightly. You're going to slide this over the top of that factory fuel sump there until these two slots here lock in the tabs. It also helps at this point if you do have a flashlight you can insert a flashlight into the tank to help you see during this portion of the installation. So insert the float first. Now that we have our sending unit and bracket assembly inside the tank, we can move on to the actual pump assembly. Um, the first thing that we will install is our foam and bladder. So again, what the bladder does is this provides an area uh, inside the tank that retains fuel around the pumps. So this is very important. You notice the foam window here. This is important as to which way to orient this inside the tank in order to get the pumps uh, properly installed. So first thing we'll do is actually fold up the foam, squeeze it together, and then you'll actually put it around the sump. And when doing that, you want to make sure that the sump or the bladder portion conforms evenly to the bottom of the foam. So we don't have any wrinkles, anything else. So next, we need to install this in the tank. So to install this within the tank, with the bladder and everything already installed, go ahead and fold that up as tightly as you can and insert into the sending unit. Now, where we're going to position the foam is very important. The foam assembly itself is positioned just on the opposite side of the uh, factory fuel bucket. And the other important factor is you want to make sure that the window or the pumps is facing the um, filler cap here, or the filler outlet. Now that we have our foam and sump assembled inside the tank down here. Um, I've ensured that the sump itself is still conformed around the foam. If you need to, um, and you think it's not conformed completely around there, or it's misshapen, you can actually lay the foam completely over inside there and use your hand to position it to make sure that it's all set. So this is the position that the foam needs to sit. Um, again, the window is facing our uh, filler neck location on the tank, which is right here. So we want it facing that way so when we go to install the pumps everything 
uh, will be in alignment. So, and again, you can see our sending unit and sending unit bracket is already installed in the tank over there. Pull those out. Uh, we have the flashlight in there to show where the phone and everything was. So we'll go ahead and take it back out again. So, next, you're going to want to take your pump assembly here. Again, this is the triple pump assembly. The other one that we are offering uh, is a dual pump assembly. So now, Take the new gasket, again you want to have a new factory replacement gasket, and slide it over the pump assembly, over all the wires, and else make sure that the sending unit wires themselves pass inside of the gasket as well. Just like that, and just let that hang loose up there. So the next step is, we're going to want to connect our sending unit wires to the pigtail wires that come off of the sending unit that's installed inside the tank. To do that, first we're going to loosely set or insert the pump all three pumps in the tank, into the tank in this sort of position. So you can see how the uh, pump, the pumps go into the hole like that. So now you go ahead and make a connection here. At this point it doesn't really matter which one of these wires you hook to, which one of the terminals, you'll have to uh, use an ohm meter to determine um, which side is which whenever you go to hook it up uh, back to the factory home. Alright, so now once our wires are hooked up, you can kind of push them back down in the tank and then kind of look inside here and make sure that your pumps are headed inside of the foam. You can see there, our pumps are positioned loosely inside the window of the foam. So now, we'll go ahead and you go ahead and push, push them a little bit farther in there. And then as you do, you'll start rotating the entire assembly, just as I'm doing right here. And then push down on the hoses and everything, make sure it all goes inside the tank. Make sure your sending unit wires are not going to be pinched. And go ahead and twist it around. Make sure your gasket is positioned down in the groove. And now the orientation of the outlet cap, you're basically going to point the vent and the, uh, the, between the vent and the return ports right here towards what would be some of the factory evap system here. So once you've got it positioned there, go ahead and push it down. Now, using one of our six provided M5 screws, you'll go ahead and start. That's actually a screw, a washer, and a lock washer. Loosen the initial one just a little bit to make sure that you've got it positioned. All right, now you can see our pallet cap is installed. We've got our uh, new socket head cap screws holding the outlet cap in place. Um, you've got your four ports here. Uh, on the main port you have a single 450 pump. On the auxiliary port you've got either another single if you're a dual pump setup. If you're a triple you actually have two more pumps coming off of the auxiliary. Um, now you will need fittings that are not provided with this um, that you will need to purchase that are a ORB uh, male to a uh, dash 8 AN flare on the side here to connect an 8 hose, a dash 8 hose to all of these different uh, ports here. The main auxiliary, your return port for your return fuel coming back from the engine, and then a vent as well. Um, on the vent as well you probably will want a rollover style um, vent on the, uh, to place, you know, at some point higher than the tank, or the highest point of the tank in the filler neck, so. Um, that is basically the install of the uh, Nissan Patrol. The other port, or the other portion of the outlet cap is the wiring terminals here. Again, the main itself will power just the single 450 pump. The auxiliary will power the uh, second two pumps if you're a triple pump setup. If you're a dual, it just powers the single second pump. Um, both of those will not run on the factory, um, elect the factory harness for the fuel pump. Those all have to be upgraded and ran with relays. Um, 
to handle the load of uh, the new pumps there. With uh, each individual pump you would need uh, about approximately a 30 amp relay. So a 30 amp relay for pump number one, 60 amp to handle the dual pumps on the auxiliary circuit. Um, and with your factory harness as well, your factory harness for the sending unit on the level terminals, that's what the LVL stands for, is fuel level. You'll actually take and uh, you'll have to splice in uh, to your factory harness and then connect a ring terminal to these connectors here to uh, hook up to the factory harness to make sure that your uh, gauge works on your dash. So um, that is the wiring rundown on here as well as the plumbing. Uh, the instructions, written instructions will include, we'll actually have a plumbing diagram too on how to uh, plumb the system up to the engine and back. So that is, um, concludes the installation of the Nissan Patrol uh, triple or dual pump assembly. The dual pump assembly is identical to installing the triple. It's just a, a dual pump instead of triple pump. So uh, if you guys have any questions too, you can let us know on the installation. Pretty straightforward, but now you're ready to roll with uh, some serious horsepower in your Nissan Patrol.